Hi, I'm here today to talk to Mandy McConaughey about her wonderful business, Painless Sports Therapy. Hi, Mandy. Hi, I'm Steve. Now, you are a proprioceptive deep tendon reflex therapist, is that right? Yes, and well done, it is a mouthful. <laughs> it is indeed. Now, tell me a bit about the technique, how it works, and the type of people that you can help. Well, we call it PDTR for short, so I'll make it easier to start off with PDTR. It was a technique that was created by a Mexican surgeon, and he now no longer operates because this, this method is so successful uh, about how it works. The way that we see it, the reason that we feel pain or we have mobility problems is that it's coming from a nerve ending, and we've got nerve endings all over our body, like everywhere all over our skin, in our organs, in our fascia, in our visceral, everywhere. And when we have an accident or a trauma or even an emotional trauma, that nerve ending, it seems to get stuck on telling the brain there's a problem. So an easy one is if you burn your hand, everyone's burnt their hand. Before you even know you've touched something hot, your brain has had a message from that nerve ending going, it's hot. The brain goes, right, don't worry, I'm here. I'm here to protect you. It turns on maybe your bicep muscle here, but it also relaxes your tricep muscle to make your hand bend, your elbow bend, and your hand move away from the heat. But when this nerve ending gets stuck on, on, on disaster mode, on I've got, a, it keeps this bicep really, really tight, and it keeps the tricep really, really weak. And then we end up with a sore shoulder or a sore elbow a day or two after we've burnt our finger. It's fascinating. And the reason it happens is because the hot nerve ending in particular, when it's dysfunctional, it creates a withdrawal pattern by the brain contracting and relaxing muscles. Currently, when we have an emotional trauma, so say someone comes in and screams at us and we are maybe eating our food. The next time we go to eat, maybe we're not hungry because in our brain the brain's gone well you're about to eat but last time you ate someone was shouting at you and I didn't like that so I'm going to tell your stomach to make you feel not hungry so you don't eat that food and you don't get reminded of that trauma of that person shouting at you and that can very easily stem onto an eating disorder or a stomach problem and we just don't have any clue at how all our illnesses start. And we, we get into a situation eventually where we're going to see doctors, specialists, we've got so much pain. But it's all coming from one incident that happened years and years ago, whether it was you burnt your hand, whether you broke your leg. All these traumas, they seem to have a long lasting effect on us unless we do serious therapy about them and I've never found in my experience that the therapy is available or you know physio all that stuff I never got the help I needed and that's why I came across all this crazy crazy stuff but really really effective stuff is because I ended up in a place that was so broken that I right. had no way to turn. So, so this gets to the the root causes then of of the the physical and the emotional traumas it, it's, it's trying to get right down to the root and how, how do you do that in practice and how do you as a as a therapist get to that root cause when it could be quite a distant memory or a trauma from a long time ago well we're quite lucky well we're very lucky because we've been equipped with everything that we need we've got a little bit of our brain that records every single moment of our life and so using muscle testing kind of like kinesiology types Stuff. you can access what's happened out you know is this is this trauma the trauma that's causing it all or is there something else because there's no point clearing out say you fell off your bike and broke your arm with every fracture comes a sound because the break, the bone has to break okay so if you do all the therapy on the fascia and the tissues and the bone that you can you've still not treated probably one of the most important things, which is the sound of the bone breaking. And every time 
your brain hears a sound near where you broke your bone. I'm doing this because I broke my bone here. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. The brain goes, oh, you've just broken your arm. And it makes your body react and do stuff and compensate when basically you've maybe rustled past a tree or, you're, you know, you, it could be any kind of noise. You could be putting on a rustly jacket and your brain's going, oh my God, you broke your arm again. So even if you do all the physiotherapy and everything feels amazing, if you can't treat the sound pathway, because there's all these pain pathways that we don't understand and we don't even look at therapy, we've got pathways that are activated by sight, because when we hurt ourselves, the first thing our brain does is it makes us look at the injury and that makes the area secrete a morphine like substance your pain so you can have an error with looking at it the sound you can even have if you think about that accident your brain goes, oh my gosh oh my god and if you think about the suffering the accident caused there's just all these different aspects that we have no idea are involved in our injuries so it's a very i mean we're, we're very complex beings then and that would make your yeah. job very difficult because every, everybody's everybody's different mandy so how how does it work in practice i mean you can do hands-on treatments but you can also do remote treatments can you explain that a bit about the hands-on side first and the areas that you cover it covers every area that's the thing and i don't have a specific thing that i focus on i ask the person of everything that I could help you with today, what would you feel best having changed in the time we're together? Because everyone has a lifetime of everything that's gone on, but there's always that thing that's the shoulder, my shoulder's really sore, dizzy, or I pee my pants every time I sneeze, any of these things. <laughs> and I just, I keep asking, I keep challenging and asking, I get them to get up and move, and then I put them back on the table and it's keeping challenging it and seeing, right, well, if I've taken away everything I can that I can find relating to what you're telling me. So a lot of the time I'll muscle test loads of bits of the body and I'll see all the different things all these muscles are doing. They can either be tense or they can be weak or they can be round the wrong way around. So when they should be tense, they're weak. And when they should be weak, they're tense. And when I find all these muscles, I'll do a bit of therapy and I'll see where this person leads me. And then I go back and I retest the muscles. And so say we've got all the muscles back to normal, except maybe a neck muscle. I'll then go right, why muscle not normal yet? Because there must be something else. So with their history, I'll go and I'll start doing the manual therapy on the muscle so I can stroke it or I can press it. And if you think that every time you injure yourself, what are the two things that you'll do? You'll do one of these things. You'll hit your head and you'll go, oh, oh my God, that was so sore. And you'll press into it, won't you? Or you'll hit your head and you'll go, oh, that was, ah, wow, that one hurt, won't you? It's always the two things. Because what happens is that these are the two main categories of physical traumas. And the way yeah. we make them feel a bit better in the moment is either pressing yeah or rubbing. So I go in and I can start, well, your neck's not, your neck's not feeling good. I could have their arm up as a muscle test. And then I would go, I'll rub the neck and I'll press on the muscle. And if the muscle doesn't change, well, I know it's done nothing. So then I'll press the neck. And then if I test the muscle and it goes down, I'm like, right, okay. So I know it's this category of nerve receptor I'm looking for. And then I can try all the different, I can use all the different types of nerve ending to find out, is it hot? Is it cold? Is it a stroke? Is it, is it a deep press? There's 20, 30 different nerve endings. So I find out what one. And maybe if I rub and I stroke and it's still strong, I'll then ask the person, think about that injury. And if the arm goes down, I know it's to do with a pain way to do with the thought of the injury. I could click beside the neck. And if the arm goes down, I know it's something to do with the noise. And I just keep following and I work kind of in a, I hate to say it, but a pyramid. Yeah, <laughs> right, okay. I'm going it's about to... detective work that you're doing, isn't it really? You're, you're yeah. sort of looking for the clues and so trying so to I'm solve the case. Where am I in here? Because if I'm at the bottom and I treat that, I'm only going to take from there down. 
And then all this stuff up here is going to recreate what I've taken away. So I keep working. I work my way up until I get here and I challenge it and I challenge it and I challenge it. And I make sure it's not coming back because there's two things that can make the work come back. Three things that can make the work come back. It can be something in the food. It can be an emotion or it can be not what we are thinking about, but the way we are thinking about what we're thinking. So the first step is take it all away. And then if it comes back, it's in the foot, it's in an emotion or it's in our thought patterns. And once you have those three things, you take them away and you can get rid of it. And you've got a treatment room, is it at home or do you have an office that you work from? Yeah, no, I just work. I've got a room upstairs, a wee therapy room. Yeah, that's good. And and you're based in Ayr in Scotland, so people from anywhere in Scotland can pretty much get to see you there. Yeah, and it's it's dead easy to find. And it, as you said, I do the remote work. So, yeah, we just do a wee Zoom session or I, I, I can take the information and I can do the work and then I can get back in touch with them and go through the session and everything that I found. Sometimes it's easier just for me to chat to them find out what they need, find out what is the things that are troubling them most, do the work, see what I find and go back and feed them back the information. And you help people with their pets as well? Yeah, I've been doing loads of work with dogs um, recently. Dogs and I do, I work with my horses and some other horses locally as well. I was actually down in Newmarket a couple of years ago and working on some race horses and just that's when I started the business. But mm -hmm. The climate change, I've just adapted the business a little bit and as we've had to. Excellent. Well, listen, it's a really interesting business. You've got some excellent testimonials from clients there who you've managed to help their pets or them. You're doing a good job, Mandy. It's a very interesting game. We're going to encourage as many people as possible to get in touch with you and hopefully you get some some excellent new new customers. But you're there to help people. I know you're a very helpful person and you're naturally interested in people. So keep up the good work. It's a great business you've got. And thank you for all that you do. And thanks for your time today. Thanks, Steve. Thanks a lot.